we need a system call that's going to change the effective user of a process. And the one that we have for that is called set UID. This is what set UID does. It takes as input a UID, which is just a number, and it changes the effective ID of this process to be that new user ID. If we passed in zero, so zero is the user ID for root, if we were able to do this, it would change the effective ID of our process to be root. Should any program be able to do that? We better not be able to do that. So if any program could do set UID to zero, that would mean user permissions are meaningless. Every user can have all the power of root. Every program can have all the power of root. And, and remember, root is just the most powerful user. We're still in user space. We're not getting into the kernel at all. But root can see the whole file, file system has access to resources that other users would not normally have access to. Better not be allowed to do this. So we shouldn't be able to do set UID to some other user unless we're powerful enough to have access to that already. So if we are root, we should be able to do set UID to something else, to something weaker, which is what Apache is doing. Right? It starts as root, and it uses set UID to get to be a less powerful user. That's at a high level what we want to do. Right? We've got the initial process running as root, so its effective user ID is zero. We would like to, before we start responding to requests, we'd like to change the user ID to be some weaker one. So it's going to be the www user ID. And then we do all our code in a safer way. This means if it tries to read a file that's readable to root, but not readable to this new ID, it won't be able to serve that file, running as though it were that, that new ID. This is what's known as the principle of least privilege. You, you are much safer if the code is running with as little power as possible, but as much as it needs to get the job done. So you don't want code having access to more resources than it really needs. And that's what we're doing here, is, as Apache is saying, in order to actually respond to this request, I don't need the access that I needed to be able to start a listener on port 80. I need much less power, and I'm going to change my user ID to reflect that. Like most good ideas, it goes back to Multics. First paper that I know of that actually mentioned this in a specific way and stated it as a clear principle was this 1973 paper about information sharing in Multics. They talk specifically about this principle of least privilege, that you want to set things up so programs don't have access to resources that they don't need. It turns out that it's pretty complicated. Part of the reason it's complicated is that there are lots of programs that want to do set UID to become less powerful, but then need to become more powerful again. So if your rule was only root can call set UID, and you can only change it to one weaker user, well, then you're kind of stuck. Right? Once you've done set UID once, you can't do it again. You can't change to be some other user. You can't do anything else. And lots of things, like if you think of what a mail spool program needs to do, well, it does need to do lots of things on behalf of different users. So either it's got to say root all the time, or it's got to be able to switch its user ID back and forth to different user IDs. So that's why it gets complicated. And there's a study from a, a paper about 10 years ago that looked at different operating systems and tried to figure out what the actual rules for set UID that they implement are that are not necessarily consistent with this documentation and not necessarily the same everywhere. So it's pretty complicated. I'm not showing you this to try to understand the details of it. So that you know, set UID is becoming root. Right? That's the one that really matters. Set UID is becoming some other user. And it's all, always one in this state machine example. Let's assume our operating system does that right. Where in Apache should it be calling set UID? OK, yeah. So one of the places we want to call it is we've started a new listener. We don't need access to port 80 anymore. We don't need access to start a, a listener socket on port 80. We want to reduce privileges. And it turns out there are a few other places. And the good thing is we can find them all. Right? As long as they're all calling set UID, we can find them. I can download Apache source code, and I can do this find command and find all the places where it uses set UID. And as long as they don't sometimes hide extra spaces in there. And I think they're pretty strict about following that convention. We can find all the calls to set UID. Um, the reason I, I don't have the find without the paren there is there are lots of places it's used in comments and other things where it's not actually calling it. And it wouldn't fit on the slide. 
without that, I wanted to show you the full results. And this is the full result. So there are only three places where it actually uses set UID in all of the Apache code. So this is pretty good. And one of the things that you do, or people do if they're worried about running some code, is definitely to grep for set UID. So this is part of what you might want to do to audit some code is to figure out if it's using set UID to make sure it's doing that carefully. And we can see the three places. And so we'll look at the three places where Apache does this. And that will give us a sense of whether we should rush to make Zeta ready to use or we feel pretty comfortable that Apache is doing things in a smart way. So this is the first one in mod privileges. And this is the main one that gets called when you're starting a new, new listener. It's setting the permissions. Here's the call to set UID. Right. This is the ID that came from that configuration file that was negative one in the example I so showed you might have been some other ID in some other configuration file. And it's setting the UID to that. That's exactly what it's doing to try to get this behavior, changing the, the UID before doing things like opening files to respond to requests. The other one, we're, uh, sorry, th so this is the call. Um, actually, this may be the one that's called. I'm not sure which one of these. I didn't trace it up the call stack to see which one gets called for the new listers. So this is dropping privileges. And this could be called lots of places. You could do a search of the source code to find it is setting the UID to negative one. So this is actually not using the one in the configuration. Um, it's using a hard code in negative one, which actually is a little confusing that they've got a configuration and it's used here. Here it's hard coded to negative one. So the more interesting one we're going to look at is this third one, which is in su exec. If you open that file, the first thing you see is this very nice note. And at least the first part of that note should probably be in the comments for every file. But you shouldn't edit code unless you know what you're doing. But this one, they're, they're more insistent than normal about it. So what su exec is doing is actually quite interesting. So often in a web server, so we have the server side includes that would run GASH. Many web pages want to run programs as part of serving the page. You may want to run those programs under a different ID. SU exec is doing is allowing you to run programs as part of serving a request that will run as a different user. So normally the embedded shell commands in Apache are going to run as the same user that's the web user. You may need to run some commands as a user that's more powerful. They're pretty good at warning you that this, this is a dangerous thing. It could be done in a way that actually makes things more secure. Depends which user you're running them under and how you set it up. OK, so that's what su exec is intending to do. And here's where it calls set UID. It is calling set UID with some parameter value that came from the configuration of the web server content that sets the UID to that. Then it does a bunch of other stuff. Remember, the point of this is it's going to set UID to some new ID and then run a script, exec some command under that new ID. So it is doing checking code after that. So first, it's checking the current working directory is OK. Then it's doing a whole bunch more checking code. So all of this is all the actual code right after the set UID. So it is checking that the directory is not writable. So why is that a good idea? Is it a problem if the, the script that we're going to su exec is in some directory that is writable to others? Yeah, so remember, others is anyone who can access the machine. Right? So if that script, that directory is writable to others, any user on the machine could have overridden the script program that's going to execute with something else. So that's pretty dangerous. It's pretty smart that it's checking that. And it's also checking all these other things. It's checking that the program you're going to run is not writable. It's checking, here's another interesting one. So it's checking if the file is set UID or set GID. So we can have programs that are set UID root, which means a user who's less powerful than root can run that program. And when it starts running, it's going to change its ID to root. So that's a very dangerous thing to allow, but something that's often necessary. So it's not going to allow you to run a set UID root program or any, any set UID program. And it's also checking that th this is the one I actually like best is the last one. So it's checking if the program is not executable. So remember, there's one permission bit that was checking executable. And 
if the program is not executable for the user, it is exiting with an error instead of going forward. So is this a security feature? So those of you who were trying to run your Zeta server on EC2 and had a 32-bit binary and were trying to run it and were getting nothing happening, I think this happened to quite a few of you, were you happy with your operating system? So, so why was it doing that? Those of you who ran into this. Right, so you, you uploaded your binary to this EC2 node. You had a shell on the EC2 node and you tried to run it. And I think you got a, like a file not found error. And the problem was, well, it was the wrong kind of binary format. But instead of getting a sensible error message, you were getting something incomprehensible because the people who are at the OS didn't really care about doing things in a way that give you a good error message when something fails. And here we see the Apache code in SU exec. They're saying, well, if the script is non-executable, we don't want the owner of the machine or the, the person setting up the web server to not get anything useful. And the problem that happens when you run exec, they're not going to get any error message. They're not going to see anything useful. It's just going to fail silently. So rather than fail silently, they have the special case to make sure something goes in the error log. They check it and put this message in. So this is really nice behavior. There's no security risk here because the exec is not going to exec the program if it's not executable. But it's a really good, it's a sign that the programmers were actually doing a good job thinking about what users want. And so after all that, now we're ready to exec. So this is what runs the command. Exec is unlike fork when we're, it uses fork inside it, but unlike fork, it should never return. When we're done with exec, we've switched the image that's running. Now it's running that new program and this one's not running. But they actually have you know, another test there if something went wrong that will print to the log file. How do we like the Apache SU exec code compared to other C code that we've looked at at least? Is this better or worse than Apple's SSL code? Thumbs up, yes. Yeah, this is a lot better. I give them three gold stars. That's about <laughs> as good as you can get in my book. Now, it could still have a security flaw in it. Right? You'd have to look at it more closely than this, but it gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling that the people writing it were paying attention to lots of things and programming in a very defensive, careful way. So you should view that as an example of how to write code. And if your code is in a nice, modern, type-safe language, you've got a big starting advantage over them. But they seem to have done a really good job. And they made their comments both useful and entertaining, which is also a good thing. That's what Apache's doing, and it seems like it's doing smart things to be real careful about when it calls set UID. 